Romania, Romania, ole, ole, ole. Romania, Romania, ole, ole, ole. So I like it how they made it a point that nobody invited the Romanian vampires to the shindig. They just showed up uninvited, you know, bitching that somebody burned their castles or something, you know, so motherfucking fitting. And then at the end, everybody's happy that they won, that, you know, love lives another day or something. And the Romanians are like, And then they're off somewhere, you know, super speeding into the sunset, probably going for a shawarma at the store kebab or something. Twilight is over and honestly I think they let themselves be inspired by the end of the Harry Potter franchise a little bit because we finally got our wish of having, well I at least finally had my wish of having a big old supernatural fight at the end of this movie so action wise I was satisfied. But also you know for all the fans of these movies you know at the end everybody's happy, everybody survived, everybody's, all the fan favorites are still with us. Which, honestly, Harry Potter did not do that well. That being said, honestly, the final fight felt like it belonged more in a superhero movie because all these vampires had different powers. You had that girl with the electrical powers, you had that guy who could control the elements, of course Bella with her super shield. So I think this is the Twilight movie which is the least torturous for a guy that got dragged in to see it with his girlfriend. That being said, in order to reach that um, superhero action goodness at the end, you need to survive the first half of the movie, which is horrible. Please make it stop. Make it stop. With the creepy ass CGI baby and the pedophilia ridden humor and everybody, everybody, everybody kissing Bella's ass, the first half hour of this is like it's on the level of Breaking Bad part one type crap and the apex of this crappiness is when Bella's father comes along and she's like you know you can't ask me where I've been and you can't ask me what happened to me and you can't ask me anything about me but know that I'm okay and I'm there saying like somebody give this guy some garlic or some superpowers because he needs to smack some sense into his daughter but once the vampires started gathering and you see that not everybody not every single vampire is as sullen and as depressed and as fucked up in the head as the Cullens. You know, this universe starts to get a little bit of color, even with the Reno vampires. On the other hand, there was something very pretentious about the Cullens, you know, feeling like they need to get everybody involved in something that is totally not their problem. Even the poor werewolves. The werewolves really got the shaft in this because, as I understood it, if vampires started killing each other, the werewolves, that, that'd be a win-win situation for them. And they try to make this incredible weak argument why they all need to stand up to the Volturi, which at the end proves to be kind of useless because at the very end of the movie, even the Volturi don't seem so bad anymore. And I have to give it to Twilight because they managed to find a way where they could actually have a big fight at the end and not have to deal with the aftermath and have that tension of killing off fan favorites while at the same time not killing them off. So really, like, Breaking Dawn Part 2 was kind of clever from that point of view. But given that the argument to stand up to Volturi was so weak and at the end the final fight did not matter, that kind of drained the entire tension out of the end of the movie and from that point of view I kind of understand why the Romanian vampires at the end would be like, fuck this shit, you know, we're out Romania, keeping it real. All in all, I think that Breaking Dawn Part 2 worked better than all the others because there was this general positive attitude that the actors brought into it. They were happier, they were less pissed off because yay, it's the final one! We're finally rid of this crap! 